Welcome to another unit circle survival guide. In this video, we'll find the exact value of cosine of negative two pi over three, and we'll use the SARC method. So a little bit about SARC, it's just an acronym to help you keep all of your information organized. The most common mistake when finding exact values is that a negative sign is omitted um, or just a small error has been made. And this method will help you keep everything in place so you can ensure your final answer will be accurate. So a quick breakdown, S stands for sketch the angle. So we'll sketch the angle terminal side and we'll know which quadrant we're in. The A stands for ASTC, which is another little acronym. And it tells us which trig functions are positive in each of the quadrants. So we'll get more into that as we actually work this example. But know that our end goal here is to decide if our final answer is positive or negative so that we can eliminate all of that consideration for the rest of the problem. The R stands for reference triangle. So we'll find a reference angle, then the special right triangle and coordinates that go with that. And then the C is for calculate. So we'll use the coordinates to calculate the trig ratio that we want. So we're going to look at the cosine of negative two pi over three. Now looking at our angle, negative two pi over three, the first thing we should notice is that it's negative. That means we have clockwise rotation. So moving from our initial position here, we know that we're rotating in the clockwise direction and let's go ahead, we know that a half rotation would be negative pi or another way to rewrite this that could be helpful for you would be negative three pi over three. So that's the same thing as negative pi, but now it has a common denominator with our angle. And I think that makes it really easy to count and divide the space into three equal parts. So we'd have about here, negative one pi over three, but then our angle rotating would be here in the third quadrant, negative two pi over three. So that's all there is to it. We sketch our angles terminal side and we're ready for step two. So the A tells us to think ASTC, or an easy phrase to help you remember that acronym is all students take classes. So let's label our coordinates, excuse me, our quadrants starting in the first quadrant, A, S, T, C. So we're just working our way around here. And this tells us which of the trig functions are going to be positive in each of these quadrants. So in quadrant one, they're all positive. In quadrant two, the S tells us only sine and its reciprocal cosecant are positive. The other four will be negative. Quadrant three, that's the one we care about for this particular example. Tangent and its reciprocal cotangent are the only ones positive. So we know our answer is going to be negative. Let's go ahead and make a note of that here. And like I said before, that eliminates the need to make any calculations with negative signs, possibly make a small error. We know that our answer is going to be negative. Let's go ahead and make a note of that. Um, and we can move forward. Um, before we do, remember we said C was for our fourth quadrant. So cosine and its reciprocal secant are the positive ones in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're ready for step three. The R tells us to find the reference angle and the triangle and coordinates that go with it. So a reference angle is just the amount of rotation from an angle's terminal side to the x-axis, so that's the space right here, that amount of rotation shown in orange. And because we labeled negative pi as negative three pi over three, another benefit of that is seeing easily the reference angle um, because from negative two pi over three to negative three pi over three, that's just a reference angle of pi over three. And then more, when we're thinking about our special right triangle that goes with that, think in degrees, that's usually how we do it for our special right triangles. It's going to be the special right triangle with the central angle of 60 degrees. So a 60, 30, 90 special right triangle. And then we know that the coordinates that go with that triangle on the unit circle shown in the first quadrant here are one half root three over two. And you know that the smaller of those two values should be the X coordinate because the triangle's shorter leg is on the horizontal axis. If you do need a refresher on your special right triangles and the coordinates and how they work with the unit circle in the first quadrant, I'll post a link to um, some unit circle basics and there are several videos there that will help you with that. All right, finally, we are ready to calculate. So to find the cosine of an angle on the unit circle, we simply look to the X coordinate. Okay, and so 
from our work in step three, we can easily see that that's going to be one half. And then we've already marked, but don't forget from step two, our final answer should be negative because this angle, this triangle is actually from the third quadrant. And that's going to tell us that the cosine of negative two pi over three is going to be negative one half. And that's all there is to it. An accurate method, use SARC and you'll get your exact values right every single time. Um, I'll post links with more worked out examples, so check those out and thanks for watching.